right. So how was South by Southwest uh, for you? Oh, I had an awesome time. Well, your head was everywhere. Uh, yeah, they really pushed that show. What is uh, it like to be in an airport... With the huge, the face the they're exact, up here too. In at the LA exact stuff. moment when I feel the angriest at the government, when I feel the most yeah. put down by mainstream yeah. society, if my head was above the metal detectors, like you, that, I don't know, I, I would my I would explode. You're right. It's Orwellian. It kind of <laughs> feels like, well, it was these guys' idea. I get angry at them. It really does feel did, like. Did it, it make you, you feel like taking your shoes off was? Did it did it, did it mitigate or well, did it make you feel like? Uh, I know I had a moment where I was I was I felt I was in the wrong line. Like <laughs> I got into the pre-screening line and I wasn't pre-screened and I had this whole thing because you want to be normal. Where's my ID? It's right behind yeah. you, asshole. <laughs> You motherfucker, have you heard of Mike Judge? Okay, well, you should really look into his stuff. It's, uh... <laughs> we, so, all, I was telling you, we were, they were also on cabs and stuff, those pictures, and I, we were all so excited, all five of us, and we were walking down the street, and this cab was parked there. So it's me, Martin Starr, TJ Miller, Zach Woods, and Thomas Middleditch, and all our faces were on this cab. This cab was parked there. And we were all walking by, and we were like, hey, can we get a picture in front of this? We just walked up to this guy. I was like, we're going to make this guy's day. Watch this. <laughs> you have a horrible life driving a cab. <laughs> Here's a little bit of goodness for you. <laughs> so we walked up all arrogant, and we were like, hey, can we take a picture in front of this cab? Here's $5. And he said, no, and drove off. <laughs> he left his parking spot to like not take a picture with us. Because he wasn't a fan? I don't know what the deal was. The other thing is they're also in New York, and of course this is the month where my parents are in Pakistan. So I'm still going to hear, like, hey, you should really go to med school, like, <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you detect a, a lace of, the whole time you're in Austin, every time we've been in Austin, for whatever festival we've been there, it's a city of festivals. <laughs> that place is, is the eternal... It's the Austin is your the guy in your circle of friends whose apartment is just wide open and everyone yeah. just hangs out there and yeah. some people have been crashing there for three days and he's not that excited about it. Yeah, and don't go to the other apartments around because that's <laughs> fucking Texas. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cool apartment. <laughs> uh, and uh, and you get to you know you you're marveling at Austin and it's gorgeous there and it's it's it the the it's everything it, it, it feels like a city that's just designed to kind. of of uh, host you and uh, and then you know through the miracle of Twitter and stuff I'm able to see Austin locals going like you know oh, it's all right that you're here but god damn this fucking thing yeah, yeah they're I would be so angry because it really <laughs> does turn over the city it's it, like, it was my first time there during the festival I've been to Austin like a dozen or more times and uh, it's a bummer to be there because you like my, yeah. my, my thing is I just want to be able to get to a place I want to go eat at or see a show and you can't move around there. It's so yeah. prohibitive. The, the amount that I get pissed at the L.A. Marathon, and yeah. uh, and please God forgive me, the Armenian genocide uh, parade. Like like I was that like, a real parade? That well, happens? I mean, they block traffic a little bit, and then I get all huffed up. You know, I'm like this saying. is the worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, exactly. what are you guys about again? Hey, why can't I cross Hollywood? I have rights! Yeah. Uh, you people should be able to relate to this. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Make the equation, for God's sakes. Get out of my way. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's like, uh, LA, LA has a couple of things that disrupt it. Uh, but San Francisco and Austin, holy jamoli. Now, yeah. the, the thing that I want, I want to be able to do, like, 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 I wish I could, because we're in bad economic times. So for all we know, Austin is like, they shouldn't be feeling that yeah. way. They should be thinking, holy shit, we would be Detroit if we didn't have 800 uh, strangers per square inch flooding our city uh, every week. Uh, but I don't know, and, and, and they don't know, and no one can know. You'd have to create a parallel universe where they didn't they didn't create that kind of. Uh, You'd have to do an "It's a Wonderful Life" with yeah, Austin. with Austin as the protagonist yeah. uh, standing on a bridge about to jump. <laughs> and going like, I can't stand being the host of all these festivals anymore. <laughs> but wait, uh, I never saw the movie. I'm just, <laughs> Have you but not what, seen it? No, I mean, I mean I, you got it. That's the movie. Yeah, I know. I, well, there's these movies like Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. And you never saw Wizard of Oz? I haven't. I don't think I've seen it all the way through. 
Like, like. So you don't. You, but you, I have it's piecemeal through every. I know. I could tell you from. Okay, starts in black and white. Uh, she works on a farm. She's bummed out. She's because it's in black and white. Uh, uh, <laughs> she meets every character that you're gonna see as an animal. Uh, and then a tornado comes. She sings a song, and a tornado comes. She sings a tornado song, and the tornado makes <laughs> makes everything go into color. Do, do you remember how the tornado song goes? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Somewhere over the tornado. <laughs> Is that the song? Is that she sings? Okay. Somewhere over the rainbow. Like, tornado yeah. song, and then she lands. <laughs> she lands on a witch. Now she's committed a crime before she even knows she does. Is uh, these little people come up and they say like, "You killed the witch." And then another witch says like, "Follow. Just uh, yeah, there's no problem. You, 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 I know how you can get out of here. Follow, follow the yellow brick road." So she follows the yellow brick road. She meets, not necessarily in this order, a scarecrow, an Iron Man, and a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a lion, lion, a lion. That would be great if it was the Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, and she meets them all. They get attacked in no necessary order by trees, monkeys, and poppies. And then they uh, they go to the Emerald City. That's the meeting with the goddess. And they get there. And then they Did atone you... with the father, which is the fact that the Wizard of Oz is just a shithead and behind a curtain. <laughs> Toto finds that out, and then they the so, somewhere along the line they make the witch melt with water. Uh, I don't know if she comes into the Emerald City and is like, "Stop it!" Uh, that part doesn't make any sense to me. But but uh, but then that then in one of the most egregious violations of my personal cinematic narrative rules, uh, she finds out she could have gone home any time by clicking her heels. Uh, and so she does, and then she wakes up and does she wake up in black and white again? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's kind of a rip off. <laughs> But I guess how are how is you going to do? Do you, do you remember what the uh, what Iron Man and the Lion and Scarecrow were searching for? What yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, there's the the each are want the Cowardly Lion wants a heart, so he has a song about wanting a heart. No, 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 no. Man. Let, let, Iron let, Man wants a heart. Let, let him talk. He has an arc reactor. He wants a heart. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Thank you very much. You're I, right. I, okay, so the Tin Man wants a heart. Tin Man, yes. yes. He doesn't have a heart. I associate the heart with courage. What the fuck does the lion want? He has a, a claws? He, I just want claws. He literally gets a diploma at the end. Right? Lion it's, cur- it's just courage. Or he gets a badge. Who gets the diploma? Scarecrow. Scare Sloppy. Uh, <laughs> so, like, 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 heart is courage, is bravery, is like, passion. So, lump it together. Make one character out of three represent those. Um, sorry. But, uh, uh, the, uh... Are, are you fixing a movie you haven't seen? <laughs> There's a reason I won't watch it. It looks I sloppy from a distance. That should be a fucking segment every episode. Dad fixes a movie he hasn't seen. We'll go down the AFI 100. Yeah. Exactly. What, 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 what's a what's a, ma- what's a major film that you haven't seen that you're like like that you're embarrassed or that you're unrepentant about not having seen? Uh, well, I mean, Wizard of Oz is a big one. Uh, so is uh, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a, it's yeah, a, well, that's it's a huge, good movie. but that's a, it's, it's so forced on you. It took me until my mid twenties to start watching Woody Allen movies because oh. because when I was growing up, it was like every stand up would come out and go, uh, uh, I'm Woody Allen, uh, go, go. and I, I, I didn't understand that he was an artist and that he was a, that he was writing things and yeah, that, 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 that I didn't I also didn't understand that he was a guy that was like. He was a nerd that was putting himself in movies. I just thought that God like made action figures <laughs> that were famous, and that this guy I was supposed to think was interesting because he had That's glasses and red hair. Like I, yeah. I, I, I didn't. Uh, and then like you have to shake that stuff, and like it's a wonder. Those holiday movies, like they're hard to swallow. It's it's a wonderful life. You have to really cut yourself off from like the weight of it, but it, it, of you know how everyone talks about it. But it's a good. I like that movie. Oh, yeah. It's a very schmaltzy, but. This is before, you know. I've seen big parts color. of it. I think. I mean, I know that. Yeah, it's a, an angel gets his wings when you ring the bell, and the Mister 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 Banks doesn't want the money in the Potter in the whale chair. The, the, you, the, 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 you know, he finds out that there? if he wasn't around, it's just. Oh it's, yeah, Mister Potter needs a heart, and <laughs> it's it sounds like its second act is a uh, sounds like a kind of. 
like kind of long. Like like okay, we I get it. I love this segment. How, how do you know how long the second? It sounds, sounds like it's kind of long because it's because I've never heard like like throughout throughout forty one years of living in a world that keeps referencing that movie. What I've never heard in anyone and reference any structural flagstones that that, <laughs> that 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 make a complete story. What it's it sounds like this guy is going to kill himself and then an angel comes up and says, "Don't kill yourself." Well, why shouldn't I? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because if you did, things would be worse. And he's like, I don't believe you. Which is, it's just like one third the Christmas Carol, you know, or a Christmas Carol. Uh, and he takes him and he goes and shows him. And goes like, look at, look at this. And he's like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm dead and people noticed. Except when we watch it now, Potterville's fucking awesome. Like, 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 the Potterville is like, like, the, the, everyone's just too, like jitterbugging, and like, there's good music. Like, it seems yeah. like oh, you, you'd rather hang out. You did ruin everything. Yeah. But I, I like the part, and I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I don't know the movie very well. I've only seen it a couple of times over a long amount of years. People are gasping, when, by the way. He, like, his house is all windy, and the house that he bought, uh, that he got with his wife, and they had a family, and the house is shitty, and it's, it's drafty, and it's falling apart, and he's going broke. And he does a run on the bank, and, and the little um, what do you call it, a little ball, a little knoll thing or knob thing that comes off the the end of the uh, stairwell, and he starts yelling, and his and his daughter is sick. And <laughs> does he take a knob off the stairwell? Yeah, it, it just keeps, it, it just comes off. It, it comes off when they first move in the house, and it's charming. It's the it's straw. The house, the house is a fixer upper, like like, we, like like this is the symbol of that we have growing to do. Right. Then it never changes. The house just keeps being shitty, and it's getting shittier. And now his daughter on Christmas Eve or whatever has a cough and she's sick because it's so fucking cold in the house. Oh, Jesus. And he starts... And so while... Like, while, while the, the angel's proving to him how bad life is, uh, would be, he's just getting angry at his family. I never forget if he goes back at this point. I don't know, but at one point, he just starts yelling at his family and he becomes like a... Like, he's like, like fuck it, I didn't fucking ask for this shit. I don't fucking want to do this. I never wanted this. I, like, I always wanted something else. You guys made me do this shit. Like, like fuck you, fuck at me, like, fuck everybody. And, and it's the, the symbol of that little piece of furniture breaking. And he raises his voice at his, at his little sick daughter, Zazu or whatever her name is. Uh, Zazu, was it? Z- Zuzu. Zuzu. And like that moment, it's like shit gets really dark and he just implodes. And that's when it starts to become not Frank Capra. It becomes really punk rock and dark. And, uh, and then Capra puts this beautiful little bow on it at the end, which is like... like it's good stuff. Also, it's, it's, it's an America that never existed. You know, it's a it's a, it's a fake sure. America. But it's, oh, wasn't there something about a pharmacist that hit a kid so much he was deaf? Or it, it, it hit him. He, uh, he can't hear to one ear because he. Clapped oh him. yeah, he that's tried, right. He tried to save him from uh, from putting like he was senile or drunk or whatever, and he was going to poison an old oh, lady. Oh yeah. And so he smashes him over the ear, and he can't hear. Her. He has a, he has a bad ear because. Of Isn't that. there also a part where they like propose and there's like a fake moon out the window that they put up? Do you remember that? Is that right? Right. They propose, yeah. I remember. Is that where you, do you want the moon, Mary? Coming? So you guys, as 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 experts in this movie, <laughs> we're, we've all experienced the same amount of cinema. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th- that movie moved me and touched me. Prove it. No, I've got. <laughs> prove it with a rap. Uh, uh, all right. No. Uh, 